So we've been thinking about making. So now what? Say you're you're at home and you have. No, I can't help it. Every time I have to uh, sit on the front of the camera. So a quick note here: uh, one of the inhaler comes in two different um, uh, forms uh, of administration, which is the MDI, which is the puffer or the uh, solution for nebulizer that you put in um, in a machine, and then you, you you inhale it through a mask. Um, it's the same drug, which is albuterol, but there's. <clears throat> A study that was done to compare the difference between giving that same exact drug through the uh, inhaler or through the machine, the nebulizer. Um, is there a, is there a difference? Uh, which one is I better? I include the link for the study so you can check it out yourself. But basically, they had <clears throat> they compared two groups at the ER, um, one with the buffer or the ventral inhaler or albuterol inhaler, and the other two with the solution for nebulizer. And they found that a group that used the uh, MDI or they used the puffer, if you will, they did better than the, the group with the solution for nebulizer. Um, there are three things happen. Uh, the peak flow rate, if you know what it means, it's basically uh, what they use to measure the uh, respiratory function. So the peak flow rate was better. Also, the oxygen saturation, and you know, what you, when you go to the ER or whatever, the hospital, or even at the doctor's office, they put that thing around your finger to measure the oxygen saturation. So people who get the uh, MDI, the, their oxygen saturation rate, got in a normal uh, normal liver f faster than the people with the nebulizer and also the uh, they were um, discharged sooner i would in this case you know faster recovery better oxygen saturation rate so i would definitely go with the um, the mdi but a quick note here remember if you are in the er because of uh, an episode of asthma attack and they give you either or if they give you the nebulizer or the um, the puffer you're or still the... gonna have to take uh, oral uh, or systemic hysteria. Okay, shifting gears here quickly. We're going to talk about the uh, spacer. Yeah, pay a lot of attention here when you when you get that spacer. Look in the package. Look, like, I, I'm sure. I mean, I hope that your doctor, your pharmacist, will have time to explain to you. But just uh, look at the package and make sure it says anti-static. Are different type of this air chamber or spacer. Um, you know the the opti healer aero chamber uh, vortex it doesn't matter it doesn't matter what brand they all work good the only thing i would stay away from i think the opti healer advantage because when you look in the package it'll say uh it is it, not going to say anti-static it has and to if say it that. didn't then it will collect static charge um on the wall of the chamber and then when you try to administer a dose the, the drug gets stuck or adhered on the um, wall of the chamber and it doesn't go into the lung so whatever you're using Whatever air chamber or space that you're using, it, it'll say anti-static because it's very important. Here's another quick tip too. On the, I think the only air chamber that has the dose indicator is um, air chamber advantage. Uh, I mean, air, air chamber plus that has um, a dose indicator. So if you have a child and you're not sure um, if he's just messing around or he actually inhaled dose, that air chamber has a, um, a dose indicator or a little flap. So every time the, the child inhale a dose, uh, it, it flaps. So that's an indicator for you that he got the um, the dose. Other um, spacer do not necessarily have that uh, uh, dose indicator. Despite so look, the importance of the uh, air chamber or the spacer, um, I see uh, a lot of uh, patients don't bother getting it, and a lot of doctors don't bother prescribing it. And surprisingly, a lot of insurance don't even pay for it or I cover it. I can show you a study that looked into the patient who are uh, using the inhaler without the spacer and patient that using the spacer, the improvement or the rate of the peak flow improvement or the respiratory function improvement in the patient who's using the spacer a lot better or more than the patient is not using it. As a matter of fact, in the uh, guidelines, I believe, um, the step up therapy, if the patient is taking Ventolin, uh, inhaler and it's not controlling the asthma symptoms um, before you add another drug you should consider adding a spacer you would think you know insurance will 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 pay for the spacer because that will cut the cost of adding another drug it only makes sense i mean what what would be um, uh, better for the patient to uh, pay for another drug to control his asthma or just pay for a spacer and have him keep what he's uh, using before adding another drug, but in in reality, in in in, in you know the pharmacy life, uh, um, you don't see that if the patient is taking the medication and is not working, just add another drug. Actually, uh, another dosage form of the uh, albuterol, which is uh, the syrup or the solution, and that just fell out of favor. I haven't seen that prescribed anymore, and the reason why is it has more systemic side effect than 
the effect that you're looking for and it has like the the, the poor therapeutic ratio so the amount that goes into the system and, and you know the cause of tr troubles is less than the the amount that goes into the lung and and, and um, that goes typically into the lung and give you the effect that you need so just keep an eye if the doctor give you the prescription for the solution that you take orally i would question that um because i'm not i'm not sure what, what we're trying to get at Zobernax. So uh, many of you may ask, like, well, what happened to that drug? I mean, it's not prescribed anymore, and you probably haven't dispensed it um, for a while, or maybe a patient haven't gotten it for a while. Well, what happened with this drug when they um, when they when they first came out? First of all, it was expensive, right? And then the uh, said rep uh, were, were trying to, um, you know, represent it to the doctors that this is more refined form of the uh, of the drug and uh, it doesn't cause any systemic side effect and it is safe to give to um, uh, the patient with um, heart condition or anything like that so um, because it's you know quote unquote safer but it's not it's not true and um, um, it, I can also include the study <clears throat> that shows you the difference between the just the traditional regular form of the albuterol or Ventolin and the uh, the Zobernax, uh, which you know they claim to be a more refined uh, drug, and it doesn't have the uh, chemicals or the ingredient that cause side effect. Uh, but then it turned out to be it's not true, and then um, that's why it's no longer prescribed. So you keep an eye on that. If the doctor was trying to tell you like this is good for you because it's safer, because you have heart condition or something like that. I would definitely question it because there is no literature to prove that it is safer by any means.